Hello, everyone. Since this is either a highlight, a standalone book, or the first episode in a series, I'm jumping in to remind you what the rules are for this podcast. First rule is no real people stories. That means that any details from our own lives are merely anecdotal. We do not read books about real people, and we are not reading historical fiction. The second rule is that we are basing our analyses off of how the author treats characters and what they put them through. We are not judging the accuracy of the trauma, the accuracy of any actual conditions that may be portrayed, nor the authenticity of a character's reaction to that trauma or that particular condition. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. This week on Books That Burn, we are talking about The Cat Who Sniffed Glue, a book in Lillian Jackson Braun's The Cat Who Murder Mystery series. Quillerin has to figure out what his cat is telling him about the murders and how to resolve some of the issues in the town. Hi, I'm Nicole. And I'm Robin. And today on Books That Burn, we have a guest. Would you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Dare. Um, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, You are joining us for The Cat Who Sniffed Glue, uh, in which there is a lot of stuff and lots of cats. Oh my goodness, so much cats. It it is a solid only two cat ratio. (laughs) I know, but they have their own apartment. They're cool. And that that makes it feel like so many more cats. Anyway, uh, the factions. We have uh, Jim Quillerin, then we have Coco and Yum Yum, the aforementioned cats, Pete, Belle Finch, Jill Fitch, David Fitch, Harley Fitch, Margaret Fitch, and Nigel Fitch. Um, one of the nice things with this book was that every chapter had the list of what characters are in that chapter, so that was a lot of fun. Um, so our first topic is erasure for bell um i think we might need to put a slight disclaimer up front um that we are going to talk about some things with bell that we don't really go really super deep in depth into in what actually happens to her in the book that's because we are going to be going in depth in those things in topic three so um bell does not survive this book but we are not talking about that until topic three we are going to cover it yep so we're calling this erasure because she spends most of the time just being referred to as somebody's wife we're like pretty far in the book before we catch her name um like she's just so so much so that i didn't even remember that she had a name Mm-hmm. When we were uh, preparing for this a second ago, I wasn't sure if she ever got one. Yeah. Uh, which is wild. She's also, like, a lot of the time when she's mentioned, not named uh, in nice ways either. It's <laughs> no, not great. No. Yeah, she is uh, lower class, but they use uh, worse terms than that. Um, they're very upset. I think she gets referred to as, like, the hired help, um, at one point. As as the spouse at the same time. To be clear, she is currently the spouse and someone is referring to her as, as the hired help that, like, that she was almost paid for her, her status. And when they're referring to her in this way, she is already dead. So yeah. it's not like she's alive and people no. feel okay bad mouthing her. It's she's dead and literally only one person, David, has anything nice to say about her. Now I I do want to note so a lot of our pers- well all 
really. That's not him being told things. <laughs> of our perspective of what happens in this book is from Quillerin. It's from Quiller, our our main character, our only real point of view character. And there are several moments where somebody uh, disparages Bell or other characters in the book that you would kind of get Quill's background thoughts of just, wow, that's harsh. <laughs> and he doesn't uh-huh. put it in those terms. Um, but th- this is kind of a, a topic that kind of almost goes under the surface because this person, Bell is so negatively thought of that she's not even really the main story and the people that are talking about her and giving details on her life when Quill is asking are almost reluctant because they don't think she's important enough like there's there's a couple of of scenes where they're like well why do you want to know about her she's just this you know this upstart who who married this guy and just to get into that family because of all the things the family has and she just wants to be part of this thing and you know she's married above her station or whatever and it's super derogatory not not because they use derogatory words but because they are the the intention of it is very much of a we're knocking her down because she is not not who we wanted and they don't say like they she should have married xyz but they say like like there's even a couple people i think who quite literally say he should have married somebody literally anybody else and it's it's just this very objectifying very like classist take on on this person who we don't even really see uh on screen so to speak and even when we have the one person who talks positively about her. It's in the sense that he is bitter that someone else married her. And so he's not with her. I would say, and now she's dead, but it's not even that. Like he no. it seems like he's no. more, he's vocally more upset that he didn't get to marry her than that. She is now dead. Yeah, he didn't get to claim her, so to speak. Yeah, she. Dare did you? Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, she <laughs> feels secondary in every aspect of her life and uh, well, death. Mm-hmm. Her her marriage is treated as a mistake and a sham and just a a form of rebellion. Um, her her tragedy is less about her actual like death and more just about uh just the like the 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 uh rich family the family that matters um Uh she is always just (laughs) referred to as like you know the lower class girl who happened to just get involved with there Mm -hmm. um and like this this book i don't know how intentional it was but really does seem to it, it focuses on class a whole lot um and it comes into play just it is a very just bourgeois setting <laughs> um just in all of it this is a, a book and series in which the cats have an apartment and a personal chef um <laughs> money and wealth happen and are discussed a lot and for this character to not have those makes her consider just gives her way less personhood um, mm-hmm. in a very, I think, interesting and y- y- yikesy way, I think would be the best <laughs> word to describe it. <laughs> yeah, and like even the people who are like working class in this town, because the town isn't all rich people. Like, no, there is like there's like a there's bunch a- of social strata in it, yeah. but everybody except for the guy she used to date, potentially. I don't know if they actually dated. Especially He's from except- a neighboring town. Just so yeah, you- <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, he's not That's- even from Pickaxe. Yeah, and neither but, is she. So everyone except for the person who wanted to date her um, resents her for changing where she was in the strata, the social strata. Mm-hmm. Whether or not they're in the strata she jumped to or the strata she left, everybody resents her because it kind of like, they don't say this, but like, it upsets the order of their world. It affronts their sense of like, where things ought to be and 
So yeah, it's not like the entire town is rich people cuz you you literally can't you literally can't have that. Well, uh, and and I will say there's not a lot of focus on it in this book. Um but just because we are doing this as a highlight, we're not reading more of these for the show. I'm going to go ahead and state that not every plot in every book in this setting deals with the upper class. Um Pickaxe is a town that has like a couple of really well-to-do people. Um, the one of the people we'll talk about later is the banker, literally the banker. This is a tiny town. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only banker. And I think the, I think there's a couple other like would-be socialites, and they're only would-be socialites because there's only like three of them, and so there isn't really anybody else for them to be social with. Um so to speak but like th- this is a town where the vast majority are like middle class in what middle class used to mean they in america they uh they have enough money to live their lives go to work come home have other hobbies they're not rich but they're not going to starve and because it is a tiny town uh they don't there isn't really like a lot of job turnover when somebody dies it is a huge deal uh when somebody moves away it's an even bigger deal and and so there's almost this sense of like changing your your class changing your social strata takes what is this like set <laughs> hierarchy of how the town itself functions and you've now disturbed the force you've now there's now an open spot where there wasn't one and you've closed off a spot that used to be there. And it, it, in a weird way, everybody in this area feels like that decision affected their lives, even though it absolutely did not. Um, um, uh, I, if I had a, a point about the town as well, in which this town, absolutely, I don't, they, I will say to, to the writer's credit, she uses a lot of great descriptors to describe everything about this town. It feels very lived in, um, and mm-hmm. it feels lived in in the sense of like a game like Stardew Valley in which there's like twenty people, but like every <laughs> oh my god every person that's such has a such good... a like like yeah because ev- even all the people we focus on, uh, I think there's maybe one or two people who actually work like food service jobs who don't actually just own the place. Like if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. I remember hearing about like two servers, one who retires, and one who's fairly new. <laughs> But everyone else is either like, ah, oh, yeah, I do, you know, I, I like hang, like hang the new wall stuff, or I like run this <laughs> weird, yeah, this weird a hundred <laughs> yeah. like year old bar, or like I, I am, am like a boat. Like everyone has a successful job in which like th- there is like maybe two people who might have to worry about getting by, like financially. This town. Just does feel like one of those idyllic places where, like, poverty just feels like it doesn't exist. We we relocate it to that like awful town that we think the the criminals come from, <laughs> and that that terrible bell girl. <laughs> right, I was gonna say, which not coincidentally is where the character we're talking about it's is from. from. Yeah, and uh, I just realized, like, it feels okay. What town is the taxidermy guy from? Is he oh, from? God. I don't know. Pickaxe, or is he from the poor town? Because it, it felt like. Didn't Quill go to the neighboring town? Yeah, I him? think he did. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, because he had to talk to people who tried to talk to people who knew Bell. And he it didn't tried go very hard. Well. But yeah, yeah, like with with the class stuff, because Pete um, uses snowshoes and is a trapper, um, mm-hmm. and then like there's a taxidermy guy. With, like, a very uh, overbearing mother. Um, <laughs> like, Quill had to, like, pretend that he was unable to interview two people at once in order to get her to stop answering for her son. Um, so, like, it definitely felt like... And I think, like, the boat guy is in that town, too. So, like, all of these more, like either rugged or more working class jobs are all like in this town that the town that has more upper class people um doesn't like and thinks is just like 
dangerous and trashy. And so, yeah. We we should say, like, jobs that are of that, like you said, like, more more rugged or more... But, but they're not things that everybody uses in everyday life. Right. Like, like you know, Dare, you mentioned, like, those people that own their own restaurant or store or like those are absolutely that quote unquote level of job but those are things that like the townspeople of pickaxe need every day right and so you know they don't look down on the local grocer who just is a customer service representative 24 7 they do look down on the taxidermist who they don't uh think of as being necessary (laughs) um yeah that's very much that so uh before we head into episode or episode wow uh section nice two i i did want to really quick point out dare you said you mentioned that that her whole story was about rebellion and i just wanted to to point out for any of our audience who has not read this book and is just listening to our show that is not her rebellion she's not <sighs> the one being rebellious and that's still like all we get of her as a person like she exists to be the like like I, I I this this may like uh, may maybe hit a bit just because as a you know as a black person but like mm-hmm. uh, one of the things that has happened um like in interacting with people romantically is there's been the occasion of like hmm I feel like I exist mostly to upset your family unless oh. a, like that that sort of like mm-hmm. fetish uh, fetishization of like I guess in this case it would be the fetish like of her like not being from that town of her being poor and like lower class of like oh you know what would really make my parents mad what would really like make my mom mad is if if i were to get with you um and like right that i found that very interesting and like and especially to when this book was written like i this this is a very weird like not big series but like examining that again would be very fun and it's i i very much enjoyed the fact we picked a book that's not like super super well known Mm -hmm. um but like i do deeply and like find it fascinating uh to the degree of her being treated as like hmm, a little bit of a i guess like i guess she exists to die and also make the parents (laughs) mad yeah uh yeah yikes 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 and there's an extra thing that I'm definitely going to circle back with with this when we get to topic three and we're talking about her more in the context of all the people whose existence her existence seems to upset. Um, Because, yeah, there's or like utilize, be an utilized extra. By yeah, man. there's like an extra terrible dimension to this that involves like who kills her. So we're going to talk about that in the third topic but yeah like and i think the book definitely is commenting on it like the the framing of the book like does not approve but also because of how impartial and impassive quiller is trying to be it means that he's not championing her he's not trying to bring her to light he's not trying to like get people to see anything he's just recording the way that the town erased her um yeah, Which... and it, yeah, and and it's definitely not a, it's it's definitely commentary, but it's definitely not. Oh, this is bad, and so we're just gonna brush past that. Like, no, the book takes the time to say, "Hey, wow, they they really don't treat her very well, do they? That seems very suspicious." And then, because it is a murder mystery, there's a whole, is this the answer thing? that he goes through like three or four times as the as 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 he's investigating um like but it's not it's not something that just happens um but it's also not the plot to Ugh. be fair yeah just yeah nope she's she's there to upset his parents gosh as far as he's concerned anyway On to Quillerin and the car accident. Um, this was one of the most terrifying and visceral things in the entire book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. It's not extremely graphic in comparison to like most of the stuff I'm reading, but in this book, it just jumps up uh, in comparison to 
everything else. Uh, because now something has happened to Quillerin, whereas mm-hmm. before everything was happening to other people. Yeah, uh, he uh, he's incredibly unflappable for this entire <laughs> story. And, and, you know, he's he's eight books deep now. So he's like, most weird stuff, he's just sort of like, yep, nope, it's happened. And, like, just very, <laughs> very like, honest and just reporting things as it comes through until something happens to the cats. And then suddenly all composure just, <laughs> just disappears from this man. And he is just mm-hmm. panicked. And it's honestly, like, the most human I've, I've seen him of just, like, I mm-hmm. everything is falling apart because he does not know where his cats are. And he waits hand and feet on these cats. Mm-hmm. They like, are very much uh, his life. <laughs> just kind of, like, talking about, like, how much he cares about these cats, like, before this car accident happens. Also, I want to clarify, the cats are fine. Just Oh, they, yeah. Yes, like, no, upfront. they are super no, okay. No animals perish. The cats are fine. They have a run-in with yeah, a skunk. Yeah, they get uh, So that causes <laughs> some things. Uh, but... He after he spends hours outside trying to find them and sitting with Polly as she tries to help him find them, like he he does find them. The cats are okay; they're a little shaken. They don't like having to go to the vet. But the cats are fine, um, but Quillerin is so not okay. And also, like before before this happened, he had been like trying to figure out why Yum Yum was upset. And also after the accident, he's still trying to figure it out because he doesn't quite have it solved. But he's trying to figure out like why Yum Yum is upset and why Coco is doing all this stuff. And the way he like concluded, oh my goodness, Yum Yum isn't using her litter box because I was a terrible person who didn't (laughs) understand that she was a feminist and needed the same quality of uh, commode as oh, Coco, gosh. and then he backed it up with action and got her an equivalent thing. He didn't just say, "Oh, she's fussy because she's a lady." He was like, "I did a bad behavior that was like misogynist and didn't give her an equal um like thing, and I'm gonna fix it." So like, he's the kind of person who who does that and assumes that his cat has like a feminist objection because she didn't use the litter box yeah (laughs) it's very Uh, it's very humorous but also it's like that's the level of like attention and care to like thinking about his cats having like inner lives and stuff and then he's in this car accident with them and he is just he's just beside himself Mm -hmm. trying and just worried and like People are like, oh, you know, we'll do a search. And he's like, and people are like, you know, an animal might get cats who are in these woods. And he's like, do not talk to me. If that is all you have to say, (laughs) go. If all you have to do is tell me that they might be dead, go, go, leave, get away. Like he he get, like he himself is in a car crash. And he is like, no, Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, Look, it's, it hurts a little. That doesn't matter. The cats are all that matters. The car, it's fine. I'm rich. I'll get a new one. I'll fix that one. Mm-hmm. I just, I need my cats. This is a man who mm-hmm. I, I mentioned in, in a previous segment, just in case, you know, people may may have mm-hmm. avoided that one, um, that mm-hmm. he has a personal chef. These cats have their own apartment. <laughs> they are the most consistent people in his life. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, for them to go missing and potentially be in danger... Um, just really, really shakes him in a way that, like, is, like, so disparate from the rest of the story that mm-hmm. it really does just sit with you of, like, huh, this, I, I am glad nothing happened, and I think a worse story, uh, probably would have done something, like, significant and mm-hmm. bad, which, once again, I do appreciate, uh, especially with these cats being the, the, the titular cats of a 28-book series, but like, yeah, it it is just truly amazing the amount of love and respect he has for the, these cats and their p- personhood. Mm-hmm. And like someone who's like trying to be helpful, like I think it was like the police chief or whatever yeah. who Brilliant. came after the accident is like, 
you know, they might be under the car. And Kaloran's like, oh no. And so he's like torn between like looking for them and worrying that like they got crushed by the car or something. And yeah, then after that, someone is like, you know, there's wild animals. And he's like, mm, no. Um, this this is a terrible joke, and I apologize in advance. Uh, oh, this no. is the worst Schrodinger's cat uh, situation oh, ever. No. I am sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, love, love a good uh, quip, good pun. Uh, Quillerin, Quillerin would have punched you. I just, I'm going to be fair. You know, and I would have deserved it, but <laughs> a good bit needs to be addressed. <laughs> and you cannot talk yes. about the uncertain fate of a cat without mentioning the obvious reference to the uncertain fate of a cat. <laughs> this is, That's this fair. is true. This is definitely true. Um, but yeah, it's this moment where like, so, so these books, these books are structured. So like, you could see it for the first time at an airport and pick up the book before you get on the plane and read it while you're in the air. And then like, maybe keep it or not. When you land on the ground, you probably have read the whole thing now, potentially like airport books are a thing. Um, this feels like a perfect airport series because, like, it's got the cast of characters at every turn. Like, really good, subtle, awesome ways of conveying all this stuff about his character previously. Like, Nicole, like, took the time to mention to Dare and myself, who, like, hadn't read any other books in this series. Like, okay, so, like, he came into his money, like, a little bit after the series starts. And my reply was, oh, I know. The book conveyed that really well. And non, not, like... You not know, in like a like a I'm lording it over you that I have this thing kind of way. Yeah, like but a in really a oh god, I had to think about it. money kind of way. And so, like, I think without, but 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 uh, but that kind of grounding can only like get you so far. And like when you have this like really cool, calm, collected person, like he has his like worries about like how to navigate his relationship with Polly. That's another place that he feels very, very human. But like he spends so much time talking about how other people feel and what's going on with other people having all this bad stuff happen, like murder, um, that I think having this event that is this like real like yeah like dare, dare said this like humanizing moment in the middle of this book it's like this is the only one that i have read and like i feel really connected to this person he like stopped feeling so like impartial and and, and like in person impersonal um as i was kind of feeling about him yeah like like this car accident just shook that up. V very classic, like, uh, the world will change around him. And he sort of just, like, is just the the conduit through which the change happens and just watches it happen. To, oh, this is a, a man with fears and, like, uh, like, it was already mentioned, his, like, sort of romantic hangups and all that stuff happening. But, like, besides that, which it feels very, like, commonplace, like, oh, will he, won't he, you know, with that... This is the one that I am like, oh, no, I am legitimately 100% all bought in on. Will Are these cats okay? Because, um, mm -hmm. like, the will he won't, he implicitly is going to take the entire course of this series. Like, yeah. We yeah. can tell that, like, this is just a snapshot in some very long thing with him and Polly. I think it even mentions, it's romantic at like, any one past moment or not. people as well that are like, mm -hmm. ah, here's this person who I also have had, like, fancies with at a different point in time <laughs> um mm -hmm. uh and that's not to say nothing of like how the cats are the smartest characters uh in this uh, in this book yes <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah canonically mentioned and also intrinsically demonstratively <laughs> the smartest <laughs> They have the, yeah. they roll the highest on their wisdom saves forever <laughs> <laughs> oh. i no, okay, I'm gonna stop you there. I feel like they roll the highest on their intelligence. Well, but not sniffing wisdom. glue, is, sniffing glue is a low Here's wisdom why. move. I will say. Yeah, because Coco thought the best way to convey the clue was to get very high. Well, to be fair, he tried really hard, just being super interested in glue binding for like. I don't know, maybe four chapters, wow. and Quill wasn't getting the hint, and he said, you know what? 
I'm just going to eat it. Maybe he'll listen. I, I have another so, solution. Uh, I'll continue. You have another. Um, okay. I, I think it may be an issue of low charisma in which Coco does not uh-huh. have the ability to convey it through through speech. Um, so thus, Coco must think outside the box with, with high intelligence. Um, yeah. Also. But I, I still contend that it's low wisdom because there were other options. I feel like that would be an intelligence score, though, because Coco is not a scientist. He might not know the glue effects before he did it. But he did it again. So that's wisdom. <laughs> well, all right. Fine. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, for, for the anime listeners out there, I will also say, reading this very much reminded me of old Detective Conan slash Case Closed stuff. Of like for people who may not know, it is a a book in which a like super smart detective like teenager gets turned into like an eight year old, uh, and has to help a bumbling detective solve various crimes and stuff. This is a a classic long running anime and manga that's been going on forever. Uh, very much where he's just like, hey, look at this, and I was like, no, you're a child. Uh, <laughs> so he just has to hint at the at the bigger people in the room, and that's what these cats are, and I love them for it. Yeah, they're great. Oh, man. On to the Fitches and the murder-suicide. And it is not a straightforward murder-suicide. It's murder-murder-stroke-suicide. There's some time gaps involved uh, i would like to amend that mm-hmm. murder murder stroke suicide mass murder yes car car crash murder uh yeah. is the car crash officially part of the murder it's an accident it, no, that's a good good point it's not I set don't... up to look like it's not murder <laughs> that's true um i don't know yeah car crash kills three people and one of the people who dies is like the main suspect and so then the police are like well Case guess our job closed. is done did we give the warning that we are spoiling oh uh yeah so we're uh, going robin it's to... too late <laughs> no that's not the twist oh we're, never mind it's fine okay just <laughs> yeah kidding. where our discussion <laughs> is going to spoil the twist um so if you don't want this uh, the twist spoiled uh the main takeaway here is there's a lot of murder and also a suicide and it has to do with the murder and we'll catch you in the wrap up uh but if you don't mind the twist being spoiled um i'm about to do that so yeah this is a murder mystery series Mm -hmm. so we are going to ruin the book in this in order to be able to talk about it yeah because otherwise It'll be so convoluted as to be an unusable discussion. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> buckle in. There's going to be like six <laughs> names. Be ready. Okay. You, All right. Can we so. can we make an agreement right now that we're going to refer to people by first name because otherwise saying oh, bitch absolutely. over and over is going to I think can be can more confusing. Oh, that that word will lose meaning. I began yeah. to I began to hate myself when I was reading the factions at the start. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, why did I do this? It was a terrible idea. Okay, so. Harley and Belle are murdered in their home. Uh, then the mom has a stroke. The dad kills himself. The three main the the main suspect and two friends die in a car crash. P- police act like the case is closed. Then the twist: we find out it wasn't actually Harley. It was his twin, David, who died. Uh... Because, because, <laughs> because, well, I'll explain the because in a minute, but basically the other twin is the one who died. And so the stroke was from the stress of, oh, no, do I tell people that one of my sons killed the other and the one that everyone thinks is dead is alive? For and the record, the mom the has stroke... a stroke from the stress. Yeah, the That's stroke the is their mom, the twins. who is named. And then, uh, uh... Margaret. <laughs> okay. And then the father, um... Nigel. The father, yeah, thank you, the father, Nigel, uh, kills himself because he can't handle 
um, that decision. And also, his spouse just had a stroke and died. Like, I am, like, that's bleak. That's so bleak. Yeah, uh, it, for, it's so for the rough. Dad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. And then, less than a chapter later, the primary initial, of course they did it, suspects all die in a car crash. And we should note, because this matters to how we're going to talk about this, uh, all of these deaths happen in like a chapter and a half. Yes, it it is a major whiplash of, oh, okay, uh, that's a huge body count in like 20 pages. It is yeah, so these are not much big chapters. that I missed the mention of the suicide and had to like go back because people <laughs> to referred it? to it a little bit later and I was oh. like... Wait, there was this, what? There, oh, and then I go back and I'm like, oh no, I missed, there was so much that I, I missed that. Um, okay, so, the complicated murder plan. So this, this is the spoiler. Bit, yeah, this is the definitely, totally a spoiler. You already spoiled a little bit, but like, absolutely spoilers. So, Margaret, the mom, got David to marry Harley's girl, Jill, while Harley was in prison. Then Harley returns and marries Belle, who we spoke about earlier. Um, because she's lower class, he marries Belle to spite his mom. But surprise, he still loves Jill. So Harley and Jill conspire to kill David and Belle and have Jill take, um, or have, have, um, have David take, or have Harley take David's place. Sorry, I wrote the wrong thing. The women don't switch. Um, so everyone thinks that uh david is oh gosh can okay I, can everyone I tldr this you say it. yeah help me I lost okay. the thread. do you it's want so to long. or you want me to dare uh i mean you feel free it's your podcast <laughs> you're the guest we get to talk all the time ah okay go for um, it <laughs> so yeah because of the the sheer stress of uh david having to survive being coming pretty much the last uh, major member of his family uh, him and Jill uh, would be going to what I believe South America. That is that is their getaway plan. Is uh, oh, yeah. Harley uh, also- in in disguise as David would oh, just yeah, okay. get to leave the country and just presumably just never come back and live it up with his <laughs> brother's uh his, th- with his brother's wife that you know he he just ended. Yep, and and I do want to so. I just want to real quick pare that down just in case anyone listened to all of that and went, what? What happened was you have twin brothers who each had girlfriends. One of those brothers left. His twin married the girl of the guy who was gone. And then when the other twin came back, he married our first topics. Um focus bell and then he conspired with his ex-girlfriend who is now his brother's wife to kill the other two partners yep yep tldr it without (laughs) because it's a lot it's a lot in the book it's a lot for quillerin to puzzle out and everyone else to run around like what is happening like the book actually has a moment where it's like okay act one two three it, four it five, is six maybe the most this event. appreciated part of this book <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just they lay it all out. for you yeah <sighs> we should have just read that but uh Ugh. anyway uh, not doing that but okay so here i'd like to circle back to the thing i mentioned earlier that i alluded to earlier and then we can talk about stuff with the other characters but so with bell because of the identity switch because um because harley isn't actually dead but everyone thinks he's dead and harley was bell's husband when people are talking positively about Harley and then either negatively or not at all about Belle after Belle is murdered, it means that it's not just people are talking about her husband who is also dead and ignoring her. They're actually saying the name of her murderer over and over and over and not saying her name at all except to trash her. 
or not saying her name at all and trashing her. So uh, our first topic is erasure. And like, this is kind of a major thing in that erasure. We just couldn't stick it on that other section without spoiling all of this. But yeah, so that's, that's a thing that's happening that is just, and, and I think that for me, that's one of the things that absolutely makes this like commentary and not just forgetting about Belle. And, and not, um, it's it's very much commentary, uh, not perpetuation, I think mm-hmm. is the important part. Because like the, these these characters very much exist in this framing um, where it's like, it's a thing in the book, but... It's a thing that a little bit gets, I think I said this in the first topic, I'm just going to say it again, because it is, I think it is important, because when we, when we talk about trauma, you get as a, as a reader, as a consumer of books, reading about things that are representative or just straight up different versions of real life traumas, this is a book that very much does not pull any punches as far as how the characters are treating each other, but we do get it through the lens of a point of view character who kind of looks at it and goes, wow, that's not great, huh? And it it treats its readers a little bit better in that regard. This this absolutely could be a series that would be incredibly damaging to read. Yeah. Um... And it's, I mean, at least it's not for me. I know, Dare, you kind of mentioned, like, yeah, some it, parallels before. Yeah, it's the one thing I will, once again, another thing I am, I want to give credit to is it, it's, it does not linger on, like, any gruesomeness about it in a oh, way no. that is appreciated because, like, <laughs> uh, you know, it could definitely go the hard, like, hey, we want to really just hammer in all the bad details. It happens and is mentioned, it goes the op- opposite way in which, it mentions stuff so fast that you can just sort of not realize, like, oh, oh, we just, we're just going to, like, mention the huge body count that shows up rapidly um, mm-hmm. and, like, not even give us that much time to breathe, um, mm-hmm. which I, I don't, I don't know if that's, I, I prefer at least that to hard, gruesome, like, looking at it, but it is mm-hmm. still not intentionally callous. But just like no, yeah. Just look at the sheer amount of destruction left in the wake of <laughs> this very, very selfish act. Um, and I will also once again, like I, I've mentioned it a couple of times, the class stuff. Uh, I think this this act goes a lot. Uh, says a lot about I think wealth, uh, at least mm-hmm. for how these characters, the um, principal uh, murderers, uh, feel about it because. There's always the situation of divorce um, and just, <laughs> yeah, like, you'll be poor, but you'll be with the partner you want to be, and you'd still have all of your family alive. <laughs> like, Yeah, this, this guy would literally rather kill his brother and his wife. And not worry about how it killed his parents. And then lose access to his, his wealth and privilege from that. Yeah. Because like, also, that's, like, yeah, that's a, they yeah. didn't in he they didn't intentionally kill the parents, but like they still died, and like you know if that does, I just hardly like to to me like I would never do stage one of this plan if for some <laughs> reason I had done stage one of this plan, and then it meant that like people that I cared about were like oh I cannot live in this world knowing that you did that i'd be like oh i have messed up yeah like something oh, they, oh, i mean no. to be fair oh, no, i have me- i have messed up like to be fair would either one of you have outed yourselves to your parents if this was if you did why, carry out stage one of this plan yeah, like uh, <laughs> uh kudos to the parents for being i you know good enough parents to be like oh that's not that's not that kid um like yeah. they they're not yeah. they're clearly not like cuz they could have been callous enough especially if the mo- mother is as bad as um sort of the way the uh Harley uh feels mm-hmm. about her 
that if mm-hmm. she truly callous and did not care about him at all, she would not have realized that it was a different kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, she she truly cared about uh both of her kid uh kids enough to realize that, oh, oh, my son has totally killed and taken the identity of his twin brother. Um I'm going to now be so stressed. This will inevitably end my life as well. Also, um, mentioning just because, like, prison is the kind of thing that uh, changes people. Like, Oh, sp- uh, spoiler alert for the book. He was gone because he was in jail. Yeah. Because we didn't so, actually say that out loud. Prison prison is the kind of thing that changes people. The, to me, one of the most unrealistic things in here is that the twins despite, like, that event for only one of them, were so physically similar that all they needed was a mustache. <laughs> really? Yeah. How really? long was he gone, though? It wasn't it, it was forever. A year. It was not a long... It was a year. Was it a year? It was oh. only a year, which is not a lot of time. It's not a lot. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not a lot of time. Also, like... rich white kid in jail. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mine. And we have no details about his jail experience, but we don't actually know that he was being mistreated in a lot of the the ways that we kind of connotatively associate with treatment of prisoners. That's true. So I just, you just know. throwing that out there. We don't also, actually know that he would have yeah. actually undergone anything. I don't know. Just it just it just feels so strange. I, I should be more specific. Rich white kid in jail in the 70s, 60s or 70s. Yeah. 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 And like, I I think this book in particular came out in like the early 80s. I don't know when it was actually written because this author is very mysterious, didn't talk a lot. Um, But like, if it came out in the 80s and was written anywhere near that time, phones exist. Like, a year does not necessarily mean you had to cut ties with your romantic interest and maybe it would have been in poor taste or something but uh, like 1988 yeah that, that uh, phones existed 1988 i can yeah. i can guarantee like yeah he could have easily just been like hey i'm i'm gonna make you my pen pal wait for me we'll do a dramatic eloping or something <laughs> they, oh it, man I, there feels like several leaps in logic to i'm going to end my brother's life and take his mustache and get my, my girl back after bet, after par- marrying no, somebody else, yes, no way the parents talked to him in jail. My bet is he oh. didn't oh, know we- anything. Oh, I he was didn't assuming know anything his- until he got out of jail and his girlfriend had married his brother. I was thinking, dare that was the dare meant uh, that his girlfriend would call him. Yeah, like oh oh, yeah, okay. being no, being, good point. being gone that 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 year that that's perfect mm-hmm. dramatic fodder of like. Every night, I, I'm thinking of you. I'm gonna write these right, letters. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. This... Even without, even if like phones aren't working well with prison in the 80s, like letters. Mail and, existed in 1988. I'll, I'll, I can <laughs> guarantee <Yep>. that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it is. Uh, it is definitely a wild. Like, oh no, I can't lose my fundage. My only option is murder. Like, no, yeah, no, it's like, not. They didn't... They didn't cheat. Like they're like yeah, yeah <laughs> they that could have uh? yeah, yeah. Um like that would have been a very different book. <laughs> the sheer the sheer like chaos and damage that they leave because they're just selfish and also really want money. Like yeah. Be- not even to best, say anything of the car crash guys. Um Best solution not getting bullied into marrying this person just to keep your inheritance. Next best thing not marrying someone despite your parents. Now, after that, gosh, just get a divorce, both of you. What are you doing? Uh, and then apparently, since they didn't do steps one, two, and three, apparently, you know, murder is the only thing that's left, I guess. Like, I don't know. I feel like maybe, like, I am i don't want to advocate cheating. But also, if your options are cheating or a murder so heinous that it side kills your parents. Um, <laughs> or maybe. Or your parents do are that. literally, you're not, a, like, you have no life skills because your rich parents have deliberately kept you from life skills and are just literally, like, canonically handing them an allowance. Just your and trust then, fund kids. Also, stash this back, your money. Pulling this back to the lens that and then the do what you want. author 
is the only one inf- with agency inflicting anything on these characters. I oh, will say, oh no, but, for but a why not have the kids? Plot, it is fantastic. Yes, yeah, I mean, kids. The, oh yeah, yeah very yeah. much so. Like, I'm just, just thinking: pull- is it weird that my brain is like you could have just embezzled and then eloped or something? <laughs> like you have the resources. We also didn't mention in terms of like what these guys do in their free time is they are pretty decent actors. Also, they were yeah. bankers. That's not like a job <laughs> in which you'd have to really be scrimping for a while. Give it five mm-hmm. years, you'd be okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. like the, there's literally, there's so many r- other routes, but then it wouldn't be a murder mystery. Oh, of course. Novel. So, it, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, whatever. No, it's yeah. What are you going like, to do? It, it says so much if about you're a like, rich, wealth. If you're a rich child, if you're a rich trust fund kid, in a murder mystery novel, obviously oh, you're just going to kill you your twin. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like you're, you're that, not that's out, the only not solution. At that point. It's the old murder yeah. switcheroo, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, so like author, the only one with agency. Uh, good job. Uh, <laughs> ten out of you, ten. <laughs> ten out of ten. Yeah, this is like the first murder mystery I think we've done. We've, I is mean, it? we did one where like, okay, I guess I guess the Raven Tower would count. Um, we've done ones yeah. where like. There's mystery around a murder. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the first, like... This is the first, Actual like, murder mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that the Raven Tower isn't, but, like, this is, like... There's the no genre. questions There's about this There's nothing else. There's no fantasy twist. Uh, <laughs> like, hard Coco. whodunit. Eh. Coco. I, I, yes, yeah. it's a whodunit. There we go. And so, in the whodunit, you need a who and something they did. Uh, and... This is a Only really one intriguing look like one. Me. Just, just convoluted enough to not be one that I would think of as the solution. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> when it happened, um, did not see that coming. Was genuinely surprised. Coco was no help to me figuring it out. <laughs> well, um, to be fair, you don't have few. I ESP. was not smart enough to appreciate Coco's brilliance and <laughs> all of the awesome clues that he was leaving. Yes, absolutely. I dropped the ball there. Um, but yeah, uh, I I ended up really liking this one. Like, I didn't know how I was going to feel about it, and like, especially having talked through it, I'm like, this is really well done. This is really well crafted. Yeah, it was a very fun read. Um, I, and the 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 twist was like I was like, all right, maybe the maybe the brother did it. Wasn't expecting the brother to have also been the victim, which is a very fun one. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be the first time. So I didn't remember the ending to this one when I reread it for this. Going in, I was like, is it the bookseller? Yeah, they do give the bookseller some like ooh for a Spooky minute. Vibes. Big yeah. big red herring for a second. Video games are a unique medium. They can tell stories. Immerse us in strange, fantastic worlds. Blur the very boundaries of our reality. But at the end of the day, video games are fun. Whatever fun is to you. I'm Jeff Moonen. And I am Matt AK Stormageddon. And on Fun and Games, we talk about the history, trends, and community of video games. It's a celebration of all the games we play and all the fun we find within them. And there's so many more games out there. So we hope you'll share in that conversation with us. Fun and Games podcast with Matt and Jeff. Find us on certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And happy gaming. On to the wrap-up and ratings for our gratuity rating for Erasure. Dare, um, what do you think? Mm, so, it's I, I am torn uh, because, like, I part of me wants to say off screen because it is treated so just like not that focused to everybody. Uh, but I think with how like pointed that lack of treatment is, might bump it up to at mm-hmm. least at least a mild for me. I would point out that things are said. Yes. Things are said about her to contribute to, yeah. um, like, she is mentioned without her yes, name. Yes, a, a good amount of time. She is not, she's, she's not mentioned in any, yeah. like, in very rarely in any, fav- very rarely, if at all, in a favor- favorable way. So, 
Uh-huh. I yeah, somewhere I think between mild and moderate is where I'm leaning. I uh, I'm a fan of moderate. moderate. Yeah, yeah, moderate feels right for this. Because um, on the one hand, it's definitely not a lot, but on the other hand, when it does come up, it's not an aside. Yeah. Like it is like the context mm-hmm. of those conversations, and I it's very pointed. Yeah, I would argue that that bumps it up to I moderate. Mean, this- this has a similar difficulty with like how we talk about neglect yes. as a trauma in the wrap ups. Like it's a similar yeah. <laughs> kind of issue where the problem is that something isn't happening. Yes. It's <laughs> yeah messy. <laughs> I've, mm-hmm. I've, okay, so here's my argument for moderate. Well, I, I agree also moderate. agree. I know. I just want to. <laughs> I just want to outline why for, I for don't think audience. mild. Yeah. So, I think if this trauma was never the focus of these conversations, uh, that that would jump it to mild because as an audience, we are not experiencing or watching this character go through this. It's just in subtext 100%. Uh, but it's not off. It's not off screen because, well, actually, yeah, that would kick it to mild off screen. I think. Um, but the fact that it is the main portion of several conversations, and we are watching it happen to this character in a in a way, and then it's pointed out that it is happening to this character. I think that that's my argument for moderate because this could totally have been written in a way where like it's almost fridge horror and you don't realize it until it's over but the book takes its time to show you that this is happening and i think that that's 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 my justification for moderate no yep uh the car accident uh this is severe yeah yeah (laughs) it it is it is given so much weight and treated with that with yeah. that weight now i will since since you know we're making clear that the trauma is car accident i i will say that it is not a it's not a gory kind of severe the the trauma isn't strictly the accident no um, and I and just, also can we slap a a a positive disclaimer on it is that not a is that too much of a I, I spoiler yes, territory uh, it involves it involves uh no I think that's going to be a spoiler. I think men sh- I think we're we're poised at the point where- How about how about without naming any characters? Mhm. The and car I can edit this out. Kill anyone. Yeah, this, I was going to say uh, everybody lives, but it is a car accident. The very particular car accident we're talking about. Yeah. Everybody lives. Yes. Because there's more than one in this book. But the very particular <laughs> one that is the focus of our segment, Everybody Lives. Um, a lot of stress. Uh, <laughs> a lot of stress okay. in that one scene. Yeah. All right. Then uh, the death. Oh. Uh, is it I th- off screen or severe? <laughs> <laughs> or oh, both. That fun... That fun middle ground, the good old, good old off-screen severe trauma. <laughs> so to be fair, this is a murder mystery book. And most of the time, in from what I understand, because it's not a genre I read very often, uh, murder mystery books don't tend to have the audience watch the murder because then it's not a mystery. Exactly. So um, is it I've... off-screen by default? I think it's off screen, but our care rating will be interesting because it's this happened somewhere else. Let me talk so much about the traumatic thing that happened yeah. off screen. Absolutely. True. That's Absolutely. true. That it is the the whole plot. Yeah. Um, Talking about a bad thing that happened to somebody else just previously. And they don't talk about it very viscerally. No, they're but- not. It, no. Yeah, the the story is not the story mm. without discussing everything around that. Uh-huh. We also talk about multiple characters with this one, which could bump it up to severe anyway, because there's more than one um, uh, 
source of trauma? Nah, I or is it I more really, moderate? I really think it's it's backstory. Just straight. Stra- oh well, it I happens really, during the book. So just straight sorry, up off, off screen. My, my apologies, off screen. I think it's just straight up off screen. Um, hmm. And the care rating is the where care. we'll talk about like lingering on descriptions because like the the way the description gets truncated just by being passed on through the grapevine to let them know that this thing happened that Mm. that transforms it and turns it into we get the information but that's true we don't have the omniscient narrator describing we don't have the panicked first person reaction <laughs> like we do for the car accident and, so and also it, if you're going with like a a a rating as um like if it, i will say this this hopefully this is incredibly a uh kind of an obtuse um <laughs> in your face response but i'm going to say it out loud anyway this is a murder mystery series if you as a person as a as a consumer of books is not okay with murder and death this, this is not the, the series for you. for you um and that is okay so, <laughs> yeah that's, that's fine, fine. Yeah, like, I, I just i just do want to state that that like we're not making light of the fact that our topic is death but we're just saying it's the that whole the description genre. on yeah, the page done it is as a very genre minimal. Is fascinating yeah. with mm-hmm. the way stuff like that is treated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Integral, interchangeable, or irrelevant for the erasure. Uh, I. You guys are going to hate my answer. Oh, no. Are you going to say it's irrelevant? You better not. I it's am. integral. No. It's integral. I think it's irrelevant. I think I would agree in the way that. And oh, the way no. that it is it is treated <laughs> This feels like the final death or something. In, in oh, the way no. that in Tragic, the way that right? the erasure is, is handled <laughs> and treated you could you could replace like that erasure with like some with something else or a something being stolen and it would be given the same weight. I think you could oh, even no. straight up just change the way they refer to this person. And have it just be the unnamed spouse that we don't really care about enough to talk about. And it would not even change the story a little bit. We or could just they literally just said her name instead of not saying her name over and over. Yeah. Oh, no. They could literally just say the wife. And okay, but does that none make it interchangeable? Erasure. Or is it really irrelevant? I think it's really irrelevant. Because, like, <sighs> even those conversations only really have to do with I- with setting up somebody else's motives somebody else's actions instead of hearing about how this character is the evidence for someone else's actions we could have just been hearing about those actions we didn't need this character as a justification at all oh no i hate that i don't (laughs) think you're wrong i just hate that because i don't know it feels like 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 one of those like you know like you're the final death is when no one remembers that you are alive. Like it feels oh, like absolutely. one of it's, those yeah, kind of it's moments because bad. Uh, Oh no, that's it so is. awful. <laughs> <sighs> <Great>. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think this trauma Like I'm fine. I'm just like uh, We'll gosh. we'll get to this. I have opinions on how this uh, trauma was handled, mm-hmm. but I definitely think the trauma itself was irrelevant. I think it was put oh, in because no. the author wanted it to exist in the book and for no other reason. I mean, technically that's the whole book, but I take your point. All right. A uh, car accident. Um, you're going to is... get my answer, too. Oh, no. You're going to say it's irrelevant. If you cut that no. whole scene out, <laughs> nothing, nothing oh, happens. Violence has been chosen. It's, it's literally... No. Oh, literally grounds, nothing changes. But it but it shows all this stuff about his character. That's it's, not has nothing to do with it, the plot at no, all. Has, no, yeah. he has, no. He's not even part of the it, plot at all. I'm, he's I'm an the observer. one who came up with yeah, our no, like, as, great words for this writing. Yeah, as as, <laughs> as like They're betraying me. It, it it is fascinating. <laughs> it's a great scene. It may be my favorite scene like in the book. 
it does not like it could be cut and thrown into any other book in this series and i think it would be the same oh no you're and right i'll throw this in the one the one <sighs> plot element that it could have affected that effect was negated by somebody canceling plans Oh, no. It has no plot relevance. No plot it's implications. It's still a it's good just scene, character development. But yeah. It's a great scene. It's it the is. best scene. It was the one that I most wanted us to talk it about is. in the thing. <sighs> Alright. Well. <laughs> now glad, good news or bad news. I'm glad you're here, Dare, so that we didn't have me and Nicole arguing for ten minutes, even though I was very, very wrong. I appreciate <laughs> you weighing in. I I, I did not you mean to be me the, the arbiter of my ways. Of, and given such power. No, no, that's... no, 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 it's no, 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 it's fine. I just I'm like ah, I came up with these cool words. Let's make them all eyes. Let's make it integral and interchangeable and irrelevant. And they have betrayed me. And uh, it's fine. <laughs> okay, all right. At least no, good news. Let me say Third category topic, not going to be irrelevant. Three. Topic three, uh, my saving, my, my well, lifeline here, Well, which is ironic. Oh, no, you better. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm not going to say it's irrelevant, but this is okay, the one good. category that would it, be really nice if it was. It's, it's literally impossible. <laughs> uh, it yeah. is integral to the plot. This is the, this is, we put the murder in murder this, this mystery. Is, this is how who done it work. <laughs> ah, yo, yo. This is the done it and who done it, or the who and who done? I don't know. It's yeah. both. <laughs> well, this is the done it and who done it. The who and who done it is the spoiler. Um, oh well, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's how that works. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thank goodness something is integral to the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Have we had an entirely irrelevant book yet? I think so. I think we had one. And it was yeah, a huge we had one. deal. That was a weird day. Yeah. Oh no, we had one where there was two irrelevance and an interchangeable, and we were like, "Uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh. Okay. No, this is definitely integral. That is like the whole reason for this book to exist is figuring out exactly what happened with this. Okay. All right. I'm feeling feeling better. Feeling feeling good. Okay. Uh, treated with care. For erasure, um, uh, I'm gonna let you two go first with your mm -mm. yeah thoughts on this. My, you see, because you had like, I mean, obviously, don't restate that comparison here, but I think that the perspective with the comparison that you mentioned uh might guide this particular rating. Um, what do you think? I there? I am like the I I am like. I feel strong not enough in which like I would have loved mm -hmm. a lot more I mean like the the issue is and the reason why we even have it here as erasure uh is to the the way this character and everything around them was treated with such a irrelevance they they exist to mostly add a number to the body count and not too much else and also I they, yeah, they, that not enough makes sense because also uh i had a thought i hope i haven't lost it Here um comes a thought. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 that'll be an earworm no thank you Aww. um because oh okay oh, i think the part of what makes it not enough is i don't think the book does enough to point out that the erasure is happening and is a problem. I think it's just there. And so if you're not going into the book with an, a, a lens of like, who is getting hurt, which is, you know, our lens going into this. Right. I think if you weren't going in with a lens that is that or something similar, where you're like looking to see where trauma happens and to whom and in what way, if you don't have a lens like that, it probably doesn't even feel like anything with this trauma happened because it's all about what they don't have. Yeah, I was also gonna I was also gonna argue not enough. Um, mostly because this character by definition cannot ever get closure and neither do we. Yeah. Just in general. And and also, 
uh, the author does not go so far in, like, like she highlights it enough that you can't brush past it and not notice. Like, it walks that really weird line of, like, if it had been explored more and if there was any kind of closure at all, it might have been a, a better on rating on our scale. Or if it had been taken out a little bit more, it might have technically... We might even not have had it to talk yeah. about for, for in the first place, but... It's right in that line where, like, it's just enough that you absolutely can't ignore it, and you get no closure, and and neither does the character. And if you're like us, especially paying attention to it, like Robin said, um, you you can't ignore it. You can't just walk away. Because yeah, once I was like, we're in our third or fourth mention, and I'm not sure what her name is. Like, once it's at that point, it's like, oh, oh, we should talk about this. Okay. All right. Okay. So the car accident. Um I This one's odd because I think the point is watching the emotional reaction to the accident. Like the accident itself is almost secondary. Um yeah. I think it's were there to watch him freak out and not be okay yeah. with this thing that's been kind of built up um, in the book. And uh, I think that makes it... I think that also makes it either no or not enough because... So we're this not could so have... So this wasn't torture porn because we weren't supposed to enjoy his reaction, but we are no. supposed to watch yeah. it. We are so. supposed to watch it. The one thing I... Okay, there are a lot of ways in which this scene could have been a lot more traumatic to yeah. go through as an audience. Um, And I think... I'm not sure if what direction this will swing <laughs> uh, or not. Any thoughts? But there is something to be said for we are not given any indicators as to the outcome until our protagonist is. Uh, there is a lot more care that could have been taken and is taken in other books where you just give the reader just a little sneak peek of, oh, there's the clue. That's what he missed. It'll yeah. be fine. The Our character just doesn't know it yet. And we get zero nothing. dramatic irony we are we are meant to sit in the passenger seat as this is happening uh, and also just yeah. feel the same emotions and it does involve pets which uh cuz can... the reader is a reader we're left in suspense for like a while yeah. we spend we spend more pages being left in suspense <laughs> than we get describing all of the the deaths in our very specific death category. Yeah. True. Yeah. I the one thing I do think I I I'm I'm leaning more on the not enough category personally than I am on just straight up no. But the only reason for that is because we do watch our pro tag get emotional support and physical support and help. So yeah, but we're not the sitting there up... watching him struggle alone, and I, I that like, for half me the makes who it feel up, less. He sent away because he was like, "Stop saying the thing that you're saying. You are not helpful." <laughs> that's so, like, true, but that's cathartic. Oh, I guess for me, yeah. like if if he had gone, oh, oh, you're probably right, and and whatever, or if or if we had had to just sit there. And and watch a litany of people uh, saying it's going to be awful. It's it is terrible. Here are your worst case scenarios. And then he didn't send those people away or even if it was just one person and he didn't get the opportunity to tell them that that wasn't helpful right now. That would have been that for me, from my perspective, as from my experience reading this, that would have been just straight up no care. Because now we have to sit there and we don't get to see him 
uh, just set that boundary. Um, but what we see on screen is his wishes and his desires and the emo- and the things that he needs emotionally and physically in this moment take precedence. And that's the thing that at least, again, this this might be a your mileage may vary category, maybe I don't know. Um, but that that to me pushes it to the not enough or yeah to the not enough level uh because that feels like care that feels like we are observing this thing but he is his needs are being centered he is getting help he he yeah he is also not alone at for all of the scene that's a good point which i think also right he's not sitting in the dark and cold by him yeah but he was ready to he was ready to, but we didn't have to watch him do that. Okay, I will I will accept not enough pointing out that he does have somebody for a lot of that. And from an author agency perspective, he has multiple people until he gets the one that is yes. helpful. <laughs> this is true. The author didn't have to give him multiple <laughs> opportunities for support. Mm-hmm. And she did, so. Okay. Uh, then uh, the death um okay so i don't feel like this was treated with care no 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 just not at all just no there's no there's not enough words devoted to it on the page to allow room for care um it's it's off screen the rare off screen no care rating um (laughs) this might be a first for us We've yeah. had mild no care. I don't think we've ever had off screen or backstory no care. Because usually those things don't end up on the page enough for us to d- have enough context to say no I... care. And like w- with the way the erasure is compound- compounds an-, an aspect of this topic, yeah. like isn't the reason that it's no care, but it does make it a I, bit worse. I, I think some of this may also have to do. With the actual medium itself, whodunits are a very weird type of story in which, like, it is, it is, like, the, the deaths in question are less about the actual emotional fallout and more about the straight facts and everything that is related to, to, like, the people involved, victims and Mm -hmm. perpetrators alike. It, like, I, I can't think of many that are actually, like, I will say the rare who done it that feels a lot more about the emotions is like some something like the movie Knives Out, whereas this and a lot of mm-hmm. like the classics oh, yeah. are a lot more about like I was just I was here in this place and like maybe me and this person didn't get along, but it's not about how much I really cared about them. Not a lot of the time, it's a situation where not many people like them or like <laughs> they they aren't thought about wistfully or anything like that. They are often just, here are the facts, here's what I've heard. It, th- the second the bodies go cold, it is mostly about the just hard objectiveness of everything around them, and not really anyone's place to comment how they felt about those facts. Especially the, our, um, our protagonist who makes a almost a point of quoting people that we watch him interview. Yeah, he is deliberately objective. Also, like, I will say it's like the it's kind of the illusion of objectivity because oh absolutely this is like a way more like nuanced discussion but like he's not actually objective oh no he's objective <laughs> Coco Coco knows exactly what's going on has no <laughs> nonsense about how to do it and Quillerin is too busy um, being a human with other stuff to do to pay attention to the objective uh, facts and figure out immediately what's happening. <laughs> the um, objective glue bindings. <laughs> uh. But but yeah, like he he's trying to be objective, but yeah, absolutely. Like the deaths aren't even about the people who die. Like they're just they're just you're right, they're just not. Um they're about what does this mean for Quillerin's overarching journey of being a person who keeps figuring out how people died and solving almost, mysteries. You men- you mentioned Knives Out as being an example of not doing this. Can I throw out an example of a, a, a show, actually, where it does feel like oh, this? Oh, sure. I think, I feel like Law and Order. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you, you don't walk into Law & Order expecting there to be care taken with the murder scenes or the descriptions. You, you can't. They don't. They do not. They pull no punches on that show. Um, especially... Uh, Sometimes fi- even physically. Yeah, and especially with the nature of something like that being very ripped from the headlines, it reaches the point where yeah. the care hits the real world of, like... It feels a little weird to do an episode based on this thing that happened in the last few years or something like, um, you know, right. Gamergate. And it feels like a weird thing to then mm-hmm. pull yeah. from that and go like, well, we're just going to build a, a thing about trauma and the end of someone's life around that, I guess. Uh, despite there being real and, victims uh, actually, who are still walking around dealing with the after uh, effects. I just remember in an episode that I want to, like, mention as an example of this, but I don't want to go down a law and order rabbit hole in this wrap-up, especially since, yeah. I just um, want to mention, because you, you actually mentioned the, the ripped from the headlines angle, which is not something I thought about, but I did think it was funny. I do think it is funny. Uh, Quillerin is a journalist. Yes. So, <laughs> there. that's almost the same, like, not just similar in a ripped from a headlines feel, but he is writing the headline. Yeah. Uh, so it is a very, very, very parallel. Um, he joins the field. brand new local paper in, in this. this book. Name it, yeah. Well. But he was that was uh, yeah. Bef- he did help name it. Uh, prior to several other plot points and resources he gains in the series, he was a journalist. That was his career. Yeah. Um So there's that. Okay. Um, that is all three traumas. So we're on to the point of view. Um, for the trauma and the aftermath. Hey, uh, hey, do you two think it's Quillerin? Um, Pretty I'm not sure. It might be Coco. <laughs> uh, as much as I'd love it to be Yum Yum, I, it has to be Quillerin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yum Yum is Yum precious. Yum doesn't get enough love. I team she Yum doesn't. Yum over here. I, I feel like Quill would agree with you. Also, on, but on I don't know. I feel like at a certain more. point, he spends so much time talking about how she doesn't get enough love that she's actually getting more attention than Coco. Oh, that's not how cat works. Cats work, I, Robin. You know this. I, sorry, I am. <laughs> I've only ever had my one cat at a oh, time, so uh, no. My, I have only had my one cat to devote all my emotional energy to at a time. Oh, well, okay, but... Yeah, which is, eh. yeah, so... Sure, semantically. Else. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it's it's Quillerin for <laughs> everything. Quillerin forever. <sighs> All right. Does anyone have an aspiring writer tip? I almost so feel be... like we started to say one with our... Uh, Dare, with your, your point about whodunits. Um... <laughs> Uh, like, it, unless somebody has I, something I, else. I can expand on that point and make it the writer's tip. Yeah. Um, I, I think a, a, the key to making a much more memorable and I think a better whodunit is, yeah, showcase care. Make caring about these people and the emotions behind it a a core part of, of your mystery if you're going to do that. Because the the loss of a person is a traumatic thing and giving it the weight it deserves, I think, leads to some more impactful writing. Yeah. Well said. Uh, favorite non-traumatic thing about this book? Did we already say this, too? Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. My favorite non-traumatic thing is uh, Quillerin talking about Yum Yum like she's a feminist, but then, like, backing it up with actions. And I did mention this in one of the other sections, but like she, he thinks that she's stressed out because of her litter pan situation, because it is plastic and not identical to what Coco has. And so, um, he, he's like, ah, she will not suffer this unequal treatment. And then he like backs that up and does something to fix it. And I appreciated the follow through because I was worried at first that it was going to be like some like shrieking feminist caricature or something. And it's like, no, he cares about her. He's doing it in like this weird skewed uh, anthropomorphic way, which is somewhat inevitable when you have a cat, but like, uh, 
ascribing these political views to the cat, I felt like a little odd. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I did, I did really like it. I like the way that the cats have their own apartment. Um, and now that I know the litter box rule of like number of cats plus one should be your number of litter boxes. All I could think about every time it got mentioned was Quiller and your one short. I know you're being cute and giving them each their own bathroom, but uh, your one short, you need, you need, need one a communal more. one. So anyway, yeah. So anyway, that was my uh, favorite thing in this. <laughs> Dare, what was yours? Um, uh, so I uh, think I really did appreciate is. Due to this, like, very small town, there is a lot of love and put into the architecture and the descriptors used to describe, whether it's the walls or the, like, way the houses look or the way the storefronts are. Uh, and I really do like that sort of small town writing, uh, especially if, you know, this town being a core, just part of the series. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Nice. Uh, so I think, uh, I, my favorite non-traumatic thing is absolutely Coco, but just so that, um, we're not, you know, only waxing positive about kitties, uh, or, you you know, we could, I could absolutely just make this a Coco-centric opinion. Uh, I just want to highlight that no profession in the town of Pickaxe specifically or I should say this, by Quillerin, no professionals are disparaged for their profession. Because it is a small town, people are very much the, um, they are the architect or the salesperson. And there's, there's definitely some, some classist things that happen with this town in this story but Quillerin never talks to a professional, either in person or in his head, and talks down to them or bad about them. And it's, you know, he has the same types of conversations with the taxidermist that he does with the architect, that he does with the bookseller, that he does with the guy who's, who, he does with his ex-housekeeper. And, and never once do we see our main character saying that somebody is inherently better than somebody else for their job yeah like when we had the taxidermy i was one i was like oh no what is this gonna be but like he he doesn't let his personal like well and and he doesn't even taxidermy come up like at all yeah no he you can that's, tell he's un- that's the thing that I like. So you can tell he's uncomfortable, but he yeah. doesn't put that on the person he's talking to. Yeah, absolutely. No, he definitely has opinions about being about his own comfort level with various things, but never once does that reflect on treating the person who is is comfortable with those things. Yeah, negative, that's that's just typically. someone doing their trade and may not like that trade necessarily, uh, but he respects the fact that you're doing it, and I really do like that as well. Yeah. Yep. And and it does put like a nice I think juxtaposition to the to the classism by other characters cuz he he's not he, doing that. He's not doing that and he's our point of view and I I feel like that it matters and I think I I really appreciate that in this series. Well, uh I so, think that does it for the cat who sniffed glue. Dare, uh, where yes. can people find you? Um well, once again just hi. I am Dare. You can find me on Twitter at nb dare e n b y d a r e um i often am just on there yelling about tabletop stuff uh i do sensitivity consultant uh work and a lot of stuff like that if you ever just want to reach out dm me um and on fridays i currently am streaming a uh tabletop game that is very power rangers influenced called millennium knights over at a, a channel called nerds with dice excellent So we'll have those links in the uh, show notes so people can check you out. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, audience, we will catch you in a fortnight. A 
All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. You can follow us on Twitter at Books That Burn, all one word. You can email us with questions, comments, or book recommendations at Books That Burn at Yahoo.com. Support us on Patreon.com slash Books That Burn. All patrons get access to our upcoming book list and receive a one time shout out. You can leave us an iTunes review. This helps people to find the show. And find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll be back in two weeks.